Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I was able to watch this movie Thursday night, 10.30 p.m. at an AMC Dolby Cinema. The elephant in the room is, was this film any good? Let me start off by saying that all art is subjective. The masses will tell you whether or not they agreed in large percentages as to whether or not this movie is any good. So let's take a gander at the Rotten Tomatoes score currently for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And as of right now, the movie at 307 critic reviews stands at an 84%. I can care less about the critics. The reality is some of these people have platforms just to spew garbage. The audience score, on the other hand, is at a resounding 95%, which means that 95% of over 5,000 verified Rotten Tomatoes customers liked this movie so yeah it was good <laughs> and here's my point of view on it it was a serious film it was somber super emotional um, revealing uh, from a character standpoint I would say that uh, is this the best film in phase four so far. Shang-Chi ranks at the top for me. Um, I think it was their best intro to a character movie that they've done since Iron Man. Uh, after Shang-Chi, I would say comes Wakanda forever. Then the last Spider-Man movie. And then Eternals for me. Everything else falls by the wayside. The portrayals of the characters that we met back in the original Black Panther film were on point. The entire cast did a great job. Um, the antagonist, uh, Namor, the Submariner, uh, Namor, the child with no love. He was tremendous. Tenok Huerta did a job. Man, I, I don't even know what else to say. I can't, I can't wait, uh, to see as to what else. He brings to us in the MCU. Uh, Winston Duke as in Baku. <sighs> what will be his future? In Wakanda. In the MCU. We don't know. But in this movie. He uh, he was treated as, as some comedic relief. And also as wise counsel. And that. I appreciate it. Uh, this came from a man who wanted the throne of Wakanda in the first movie. But he didn't get it. Now, 
with the way that the movie ends up. We don't know where Mbaku is going to go. As per our great Queen Ramonda, played by Angela Bassett. Man. This, this magnificent, magnificent uh, woman, actress. I can't say anything bad about her role, uh, the job she did how much emotion was felt uh, through the screen in her voice in her face you, you, you felt the sorrow the anger the loss her trying to put on a brave face for her nation and her immediate family the child she had left you also get a couple of surprises in the film ain't spoiling that Uh, I think that Shuri aka Letitia Wright did an amazing job as well It, it was hard not to feel in this movie and that was the lone expectation I had about this film I was going into this film with one thought. This movie is going to make me feel something. And it did just that. I didn't purport whether or not they would, uh, how can I say, uh, move the MCU forward? Nah, this ain't that film. Um, were we going to get some off the wall action scenes maybe for the newer characters but for the characters that came from the movie before this was more expression of their love, their grief of their friend and King and that was felt through the entire movie to also speak on uh, I guess what people will call the elephant in the room uh, the Chadwick Boseman sized hole in the movie Uh, you'll read reviews or you'll hear people say Man, you really felt the loss of Chadwick Boseman in this film. Like, he really should have been in it. I think Ryan Coogler, the director of this film, intentionally made it feel that he was missing. Because he is. I'm not too sure... Why would people would think otherwise? Just doesn't make much sense to me in that in 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 that regard. The real world loss of a man to then comparatively put it in a piece of art that is film, and in this case Black Panther Wakanda Forever. For you not to feel that loss would have been in my eyes disrespectful not only to the character of King T'Challa who died in the film but also to the man Chadwick Boseman who died in real life that had to be felt yes the MCU Wakanda Black Panther, that will go on. That is inevitable. It's Hollywood. But let's take time and appreciate the reverence that Kevin Feige had for this man 
and to make this film that important and that poignant so that people, fans, cast and crew work through that loss and grief. That's what this movie movie was about. I guess you can also say, you know, typical MCU stuff. Some comedy, introduction of new characters. I spoke about Namor earlier, um, the Talokan people, the world of Talokan, the, the origin story that Ryan Coogler came up with for Namor and the Talokan people was amazing to me. Uh, he did a tremendous job with that. Also, the parallels that are drawn between how Wakanda was in the first Black Panther movie to how Talokan is in this Black Panther movie. Kings trying to do their best for their people trying to to protect their people I came away with that from this film and also I'll say that the powerful performances in this film can now be a standard for MCU films going forward because you don't have to just play a character or play yourself trying to be a character you can lean into some of this stuff you can make some very unique choices and make people feel uh, which I feel is what art is supposed to do or at least lead you down the road of interpretation so with that being said Black Panther Wakanda Forever is highly recommended to everyone listening to everyone who's taking their time to be on my feed for right now. Appreciate you. I'll be back soon. I got to go ahead and uh, round up my movies for October. I watched eight of them. So I want to be able to uh, talk about them in the same context. And uh, make sure that uh, folks know about certain things being out in theaters. I know some people don't like the idea of going back to theaters yet. I've been back in the theaters for the last year and a half. Ain't caught no COVID once. The theater experience is like no other. It's supposed to be communal. And for the majority of people it is. I myself go to the movies to go to the movies by myself a lot of the time. My schedule's weird. It doesn't allow me to uh congregate with uh with friends and loved ones as much as I would like. And at the same time, not everybody likes the same shit. So I don't invite people along. But that takes a certain level of knowledge of the people around you to know what they'll like and 
and what they dislike. So, you know, you don't waste your time or someone else's time during an outing. So, yeah, uh, it is officially Sunday, November 13th. I'll be watching the Steven Spielberg film, The Fablemans, uh, today at 4 p.m. after my workout. So I'll be recording another long form podcast about that film as well. And you'll also get my roundup of my month of October in review. Thank you, folks. I'll see y'all on the flip. Peace and much love.